My name is Jeff Branch and this is video three in a series which I'm calling SketchUp Free for Woodworkers Extreme Basics. This video is intended to support classroom instruction at the Alabama Woodworkers Guild. What you see in this video builds upon information given in prior videos, so it's a good idea to go back and watch them first. Links to the previous videos are in the description below as well as a link to download the text of this video. So this is video three, and in this video, we will discuss a very important concept in SketchUp, that being turning loose geometry into a component, and we'll also compare components to the somewhat similar concept of groups. To help explain the difference between components and groups, I'm going to use this model of a coffee table I designed a number of years ago. When I first began using SketchUp, for a table like this, I would first draw the front left leg. Next would be the apron, and before I knew it, I'd already be having problems. To further illustrate what I'm talking about, in the foreground, I have drawn a new leg. So let's talk about this early frustration. I did not understand what loose geometry is and why such geometry is fraught with problems. While this new leg looks like a finished part, it needs one more step before it's truly finished. That's because the leg is still loose geometry. I can type M for the move tool and select this edge and while depressing the left mouse key, move it around and you can see I'm getting some pretty crazy shapes. That's because the leg lacks a protective wrapper or container. If I click on the legs on the coffee table, you can see that they have a container. I'm clicking them once and I get the whole leg because it's a component. If I bring up the entity panel on the right side of the screen, you can see the description of the item selected. Here it says leg, and clicking on this apron tells me it's a component called upper apron. The new leg lacks a container and an identifying name as well. In fact, when I click this object, what I get is just what I'm clicking, not the whole leg like you can with the coffee table. But where loose geometry presents the biggest problem is when you go to draw the next part. Let's add the apron. T for tape measure tool. I'll start at this edge of the leg, click the mouse and move along the green axis to the back edge. Let go of the mouse and note in the measurements box in the lower right corner of the screen, I'll type 0.5 and press enter. This gives me a guideline to help position the apron for the half inch inset. R for rectangle tool and let's click here and move the mouse down and back. Let go of the mouse and note in the measurements box I'll type 2 comma 0.75 and press enter. This gives me the 3 quarter inch thick apron that is 2 inches wide. Next P for push pull and I'll hover over this face and holding down the left mouse key I'll pull the length of the apron and point to this corner of the leg. Note the measurements box says 26 and a quarter, which is what we want. Then let go of the mouse and spacebar deactivates push-pull. So the problem here and what was a major frustration when I began using SketchUp is that what I've drawn is not a new part, but actually a new shape added to the leg. And that is how SketchUp views this object as one piece of geometry. SketchUp does not know that I need these two shapes to be different parts of the model. And just like before, if I attempt to move the apron, I get an equally odd result. So how do we fix this? Let's back up and remove the apron using the undo feature in the bottom left of the screen. We can now either make this leg a component or a group. Either option gives the leg the needed container, but an important distinction for groups is that they do not have identity or a name. Components do have an identity. Being able to identify your components is a big deal, so this makes components the best option for most all of what you'll draw in SketchUp. To make the leg a component, triple click it, which selects all of the leg, and then the keyboard shortcut is G. This brings up the component dialog box. Give the component a name, let's call this new leg, and press enter, and we have a component. You can click it, and now we get the whole leg. Now let's draw the same apron as before. R for the rectangle tool and click here and move the mouse down and back. 
let go of the mouse and type 2 comma 0.75 and press enter. P for push pull and I'll pull the length of the apron and point here. Then let go of the mouse. Spacebar deactivates push pull. Triple click it and type G. Enter the part name and we'll call this new apron and press enter. Your apron is now finished. The important thing here is that SketchUp now recognizes these two components as separate parts. And because these are separate parts, they do not stick to each other like loose geometry will. I like to use components, but let's talk about how groups can be helpful. This SketchUp model is a side table I'm currently building. All of the parts you see are components. Where I like to use groups is when I need to combine parts into subassemblies. Let's pull this drawer out. First, I'm going to click the drawer, M for the Move tool, and I'll click this point on the back leg and then this point on the front leg, and then let go of the mouse. Spacebar deactivates the Move tool, and we can see all the drawer parts, and they are all individual components, but because they have been grouped together, they act as a completed drawer would. This makes groups very useful for combining subassemblies. Now I'm going to undo this and make note of how I move the drawer outward. Click the drawer, type M for the Move tool, and the action of the Move tool can reference any point on the model. I'll click the back leg and then the front leg. By looking in the measurements box, you can see I have moved the drawer almost 20 inches. If I decide this distance isn't far enough, with the Move tool still active, I can type a greater distance, let's say 24 inches, and hit Enter. Remember with the drawer components grouped, they act as one object, which is a nice feature. Now, let's make the side assembly a group. Spacebar activates the Select tool, and I'll click this leg and then hold down the Control key. Note the Select Tool icon and the little plus sign which appears and confirms I can select multiple objects. I'll continue to click the slats, stretcher, back leg, and apron. Next, with your mouse, right click and from the pop-up menu choose Make a Group. A new group has been created and you can see the blue bounding box showing the group's boundary. And just as with the drawer, I can move all the side components as a subassembly. Let's put the side back in place by clicking Undo, and if I ever need to remove this subassembly from being a group, all I have to do is right click it, and from the menu select Explode. This returns the group to individual components. So here's an important distinction for groups. Another reason to use components versus groups has to do with multiple instances of the same part, or an easier way to say this is copies of the same part. As you can see, this table has four legs. The efficient way to make these legs is to draw one and then make copies. In the foreground of this view, the new parts on the left are components and the new parts on the right are groups. The easy way to make a copy of the first leg is to do what is called Move a Copy. Activate the Move tool and begin to move the leg along the red axis. As you do this, tap the Control key and a copy of the original appears. The Control key adds an additional function to the Move tool and allows you to move a copy. Still on the red axis, I know from the measurements shown on the coffee table that I need to move the leg 28 inches. Type 28 and press Enter. One last command. As you can see from the colored face, the second leg is oriented the same as the first. We need to change this and orient the red face inward. To do this, right-click the leg and select Flip Along, and because we move the leg on the red axis, we'll choose Components Red. This correctly orients the leg and is important if you want to add joinery to your model. Here's another big difference between components and groups. Let's say you decide to make a change to your design. Let's say move the top to where it's an additional two inches off the ground. 
This means you'll need to add two inches to the length of your legs, and it means that you will have to edit this component. To do this, double click the leg, which opens the component for editing. With push pull, begin moving along the blue axis and let go of the mouse. Then type two and press enter. Next, spacebar deactivates push pull and click anywhere outside the component which closes the component for editing. What we see is that both legs have increased in length, but we have just altered one of them. Because the second leg is the same component as the first, SketchUp will change both of them, making modeling much easier and faster. If I do the same thing to the coffee table model, you will see that all four legs change. Let's add four inches. First, this tabletop is a group of components, and I can hide it by right-clicking the top and select Hide from the pop-up menu. Double-click any leg using Push-Pull, pull the leg upward, and type 4 and press Enter. All four legs change, which is pretty cool and a very useful feature. I can then raise the top and upper aprons accordingly. By the way, to unhide the top, Click the display icon here, which gives you three options to unhide. I'll choose unhide last. You can't do the same operation with groups though, because they don't have an identity and are not linked to each other. Changing one doesn't change the other. Double click the slug, which opens the group for editing. Use push pull and you can see this operation does not impact the second leg, which is a copy of the first. We've covered a lot of ground and I'm going to stop here. There's a lot to learn in this video, but this video has a ton of tips to help you become a really smart SketchUp user. What I'd like you to practice is all the little things which help you model more efficiently. All the keyboard shortcuts used, moving items along an axis and typing the distance, how to add an additional function to a tool by, for example, tapping the control key. All of these shortcuts are listed in the downloadable quick reference guide found in the description of video one. If there's something you don't understand, leave me a comment below. And in video four, we will complete the drawing of a simple model, which will require greater use of a tape measure tool.